What's up guys, this is Phil and welcome back to Time Serves. And there are just some things one should never do in court. Using your cell phone, leaving before your appearance, dressing appropriately, don't be disrespectful. You know, the easy things that a normal person would say, hey, for one day, I'm in court, I'm going to do the right thing. However, this is time served, and you know these things were not followed. And this leads our favorite judge to layeth the smacketh down on each defendant who chooses not to follow these rules. Not all of them were disrespectful. Some of them were just plain old DDD and had technical difficulties. I don't feel the need to blur the faces because we really didn't even deal with their court cases. Then after Judge Bryant, we go to another disrespectful moment in Judge Washington's courtroom that may have taken the cake. So let's get it going. Let's roll, nerds. All right, Miss Larry K. Goes at a review on. Um, well, I, I think she Kate is at a review on June twentieth of this year. No, I did not. And Your I'm Honor, um, man, be quiet. No, no. Yes, you did. Your Honor, so June twentieth, she did appear, but it was a rescheduling day. Uh, it was a, a the court was rescheduling appearances or here court dates for June twentieth, and um, she's one of the people who got rescheduled to today. Well, let me ask you this: how did she how did she get a Raymond on a bench warrant? So let let's go through the rest. There, so there there was a case. No, hold on. That. Okay, right. So listen, <laughs> listen. Don't act like that. Don't act like she's not here on a Raymond on the bench warrant and go tell me I didn't know I didn't. Okay, let me correct the date and get the date correct that she failed to appear for court because Miss Larry failed to appear. So hold on. She failed to appear for court. February 14th, 2023. She failed to appear for court on February the 14th, 2023. A warrant was issued for her arrest. And then the matter was scheduled for April the 11th. And she failed to appear April 11th. And then the matter was scheduled for June 20th and then the matters were adjourned from June 20th so she failed to appear twice I apologize for the date of that one failure to appear it looked like we should have stuck with me thinking she only failed to appear once but she failed to appear twice and um back in February and back in April she owes $674 according uh, to the report from probation and she has failed to complete community service. Mr. Gregory. And your honor, I do want to address that. I was trying to stop you where you would only believe that it was one KPS, but. Oh, but no. <laughs> um, missing, but go ahead. But your honor, um, Ms. Larry has made strides recently to improve her status with probation. She's uh, she is she's reported that she has two hours left of community service. She recently made a um, a payment of close to roughly half of what the probation was, what, what the restitution was in her case. Um, and she got a new job. She's working to finish this um more act much more actively than previously she uh, again uh does have a local address and and employment now which is really important when you're talking about trying to pay off the uh restitution we do ask that the court just set another review date um she is in in contact with probation and has made uh significant strides in in recent months to resolve this all right let me just see 
Ms. McCall sent an update on Ms. Larry that I did not forward, but I'm going to pull it up. Come on, come on. There we go. All right. So according to Ms. McCall, Ms. Larry, no, okay. Okay. Yes, so this is as of yesterday. Miss Larry still um, has a balance of $674 in restitution. She has completed 70 of the 72 hours uh, for the community service. So she still has a balance of $674 and two hours of community service uh, to complete. Mm -hmm. So how what are we doing about Oops, I'm doing that on the wrong computer. What are we going to do about that, Mr. Gregory? Uh, Your Honor, I would ask, especially in light that she has made active strides recently, I'd ask the court to set a review date um, with three come? months. She's going to come. Uh, Your Honor? I said, is she going to come to the review date? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. She will. She will be there. Uh, and that is an amount of time that she needs in order to uh, make the payments for the for uh, her probation. Is that correct, Miss Larry? Um, three months. Did you say no? Because it's not going to take me that long. So let's say a month. So we'll, we can. We'll get say this three over. for now, Miss Larry. Okay. Now, I know, I know she's not going to say so we can get this over with after she failed to come two times. Now, I know we're not in a hurry now to get. No, Miss, Miss, I, I mean, Judge, Judge Bryant, the last, the, the second uh, not appearing was because my, my court date went to my old address. And whose responsibility is it to notify probation immediately of any change of their address, phone number, or employment status? Oh, they, I've been where I'm at now for seven years. So they sent but this Ben, ma'am, don't tell me about... No, we didn't. It, it went to a wrong... Ms. Larry, address. Ms. Larry, it doesn't... Ms. Larry, it doesn't let me right tell you now. something about me. Okay. Let me tell you something about Judge Bryant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm anal when it comes to my job. I want to dot every I I can and cross every T that pe uh, pops up. Yes, ma'am. I told you the court date in court. We're we not talking about any mail that might have came to your address. Ma'am, let's go through the register of action because now that's what you are going to have me go through the register of action. So let's see. You were sentenced on July 20th, 2021. And at the time of the sentencing, I would have confirmed the address that was on the pre-sentence investigation. I would say, is this correct address? And then they would have, you know, did it. Then we came and you came for review on July 19th of 2020. Well, you came for review on November 16th. You came for review on July 19th. And on July 19th of 2022, out of my mouth, out of my mouth, out <coughs> of my own mouth, I said, okay, we're going to continue the review to February the 14th of 2023. So I'm confused as to why I would care about some mail that went to some address that you say was your wrong address. Correct. Because yes. the address that you have been at for the last seven years, that's the address that we have on this paperwork. That's the address yes, we have. Okay. Yep. So if I told you to come to court on July 14th, I don't know why we're looking for mail. I don't, I don't know why we, what we're looking for in the mail. Nonetheless, I said, come on February 14th. You didn't come. You you didn't come. You you said, no, nope, I'm not coming. And you didn't come. It had nothing to do with the mail. And then I didn't issue a warrant for your arrest that day. I rescheduled it to another day. And then you still didn't come. But that's okay. Let's move on. That's why it's important a lot of times when you have a lawyer to let the lawyer talk for you. Because when you say stuff, they already know what's going to caused me to give a speech and telling me about some mail after I've given the date in court. Yeah, that's going to get a speech every time. Okay, so um, we're not in a hurry now because we've been waiting to do the case um, for a long time. So we're not in a hurry, but we're going to uh, schedule the case. I'll, I'll continue the case 
first of all, we will re reinstate the probation because the probation needs to be reinstated, even though they've been allowing her to perform uh, on a probation when she's been in warrant status. So that was that's a little confusing to me. But hey, we will set aside any warrant, recall any capias, reinstate the probation. And set the matter for September the 21st at 1.30. It's nothing going to come in the mail. That's the date. September 21st at 1.30. Do you mind if I walk to my calendar and write it on there? I'll put you in a breakout room and then you can put it on there and then you can. Um, September 21st, 1 Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Nothing, nothing further. Okay, then we're all set. September 21st at 1 30. She's going to go to the breakout room, maybe. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. You're welcome. Okay, you're, she's not going to the breakout room. For pretrial conference appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Your Honor, Austin Gregory, PA 5193, on behalf of Mr. Roberson, who's present by Zoom. Uh, Mr. Roberson, please unmute and state your full name for the record. Unmute first, Mr. Roberson. Sir, unmute. You came in unmuting. Now you can't unmute. Unmute. Take your name, Thank Mr. You. Roberson. Lord, Jesus. I can't Mr. hear. It's probably because you're outside. Unmute and state your name. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to try to help him here? Because I'm not going to, you know. <laughs> Mr. Roberson, we can hear you. So please turn your volume up and just say your name. He can't because he can't even hear me. He's outside. He can't hear you. Hold on. Let me just listen. Listen. We're going to move him to breakout room number one. We're going to see if he goes and you can help him because he can't hear. He can't hear us. Okay, let's do Miss Larry before you go, and then you can help him here. Thank you, Your Honor. Take him some headphones, Mr. Gray. <laughs> I will, Your Honor. <laughs> Five minutes later. Okay. Why is he logging in on Zoom? I said go in the hall, and you were going to call him. I'm not going to keep bringing him in. Is Mr. Robertson? I mean, is Mr. McLean still in the hallway? Um, Judge, Mr. Officer Craft has stepped out, so I'm not sure. You want me to check in? Here we go. Hold on. Is Mr. McLean still in the hallway? He's not in the hallway no more. Why? Why is he not in the hallway? He said his ride was coming, Your Honor, and he was not going to miss it. A mess, a mess, a mess, a mess. Okay, well, since he got in his ride, I'm going to remove him from the courtroom.
Ms. Meyer got kicked out of Zoom and looks like the meeting is locked. The meeting is not locked. The meeting is not locked. Okay, she must be at the wrong place. Um, yes, we're going to keep doing this with Mr. McLean until he find out this warrant is getting ready to go out for his arrest. I just call him right now. Well, no, he keep on coming back. He for, and, and I'm I want to talk to the person who's driving that vehicle. And then he's gonna keep coming back and he can't hear us. And then this is what I gotta put up with. This is what I have to put up with. Call Mr. McLean and see if he answers the phone. I'm going to remove him again so his phone can be free. He's not even looking at the screen half the time. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay, so he's trying to answer. Okay, tell, tell him hello. Hello. Mr. McLean, are you, this is Attorney Stevens, and are you able to hear me, sir? Yes, I sure can. Okay. okay. Ask, ask Mr. McLean who's driving that vehicle. Yes, sure Mr. McLean. Mr. McLean. Yes, ma'am. The court wants to know who's driving the vehicle you're riding in, sir. Uh, Mr. Rich from Team Wellness. All right. Ask Mr. Rich from Team Wellness. Why on God's green earth did he pick Mr. McC Mr. McLean up from court before Mr. McLean's court hearing? Mr. Rich. Mr. Rich. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Rich. This is Attorney Janice Stevenson. Um, are, you're a driver with Team Wellness. Yes. Sir, did you know that Mr. McLean had court this morning? Uh, yes. He was there. Right. The court wants to know why you picked Mr. McLean up from the courthouse when he still had court. Okay. There's not there's not an answer. The judge wants to know why you picked Mr. McLean up from court prior to his seeing the judge? Uh, he called me. He told me he was he, he had it on Zoom. So I, I, I came back, well, was coming to get him. Then he called me and said they called him in the court. So I didn't come, I didn't come. Mr. Rich is indicating that he got a call from Mr. McLean that said he would be going to court on Zoom, which is why he picked him up. And so now he's going to go to court in a moving vehicle? So Mr. Um, Mr. Rich, Mr. McLean cannot appear in front of the judge from a moving vehicle. Is okay. are you able to stop the vehicle? Yes, it's, it's stopped right now. Okay, all right. And then is he going to connect to Zoom? Because I'm I'm, I'm going to say have some words for Mr. McLean. Is he going to be able to connect to Zoom? Because now he can't even connect to the Zoom. This was ignorant. So, Mr. McLean, can you hear me, sir? Like that. Okay, so you have to be able to connect with your video and your audio. Okay, how do I do that? I'm going exactly. To that's why he should have stayed in court. Tell him that's exactly why he should have stayed in court. Put in my ID number. In. Mr. Oh, McLean, hold on one second, sir. I, I cannot instruct you as to how to make your device connect you to Zoom. So you really... If you don't know how to come to court on Zoom, you have to come to court in person. Yes, sir. Are you able to return to the 36th District Court? Oh, I got shorts on and a uh, uh, shirt. Just one second. He was improperly attired. That was the problem. No, Pardon. that wasn't the problem because I specifically indicated that I was going to let him come to court because he came from Team Wellness. So the judge would, because of... The fact that you're over at Team Wellness, Mr. McLean, the judge will let you come to court. She'll make an exception to her, her dress code policy. 
because you're at Mr. Team McClain, Wellness. Why did he call for his ride? So I gotta show back up. And the judge wants to know why you called for your ride to pick you up rather than waiting in the hallway. That I had to Zoom and then I was on Zoom and then I went back in because it was taking forever. Okay. So, Mr. McLean, hold on a second. So, when Officer Crafts directs you to wait in the hallway, you kind of have to wait in the hallway, all right? Okay. Okay. All right. So, I got to go back. Should he return now, Your Honor? I mean, we're going to be finished in a little while. I, how, I long would, how long would it take you guys to get back to the courthouse? Three minutes to now. Three minutes. three minutes to return to the courthouse, Your Honor. You said 30? Three. Three. Okay. Can he come back to the court, please, and, and come up the stairs and wait like we told him to wait? So, Mr. McClain, you need to... Thank you, Mr. Rich. Mr. McClain, you do need to return to the 36th District Court, go back to courtroom 339, and follow the officer's instructions, Okay. Wait where Mr. Crafts tells you to wait patiently, sir. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Blessed assurance. Um, let's try Miss Wilson again. Okay. And then we can bring Miss Mostrick out because she's finished. Okay. Ms. Wilson, ma'am, please unmute and please tell the judge your full name. Danielle Jennifer Wilson. Today is a day set for pretrial conference. How are we proceeding? On behalf of Ms. Wilson, Your Honor, we would move for dismissal for the complainant's failure to appear. Ms. Ritter. Judge, it's the first scheduling of the pretrial conference. I'm going to ask the court to adjourn the pretrial conference to give the complaining witness one more opportunity to appear. And Your Honor, for the, for the court's information, the second defendant was scheduled for August 17th for an adjourned pretrial conference. Uh, who, was the, who was the co-defendant on Wilson? Ms. Haley. Oh, okay. Under 8.30. So, did, Ms. Stevenson, did you all represent Ms. Haley? I have my note indicates that Ms. Haley should be here as well. Just one second, Judge. We're both here. I already did, Ms. Haley. May I put your Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. You okay. Text and stuff while we in court. Mm. Okay, thank you for that information, Your Honor. Um, in that, oh, and Ms. Haley was defendant number two. Our normal practice is to request that the court appoint counsel for just the su for subsequent defendants. So we usually take defendant number one, Your Honor. So I will um, leave that to the court's discretion as to which of these defendants we should represent. I was waiting to see, you know, I was, just, I mean, I was just waiting. I was wondering if Miss Wilson was going to unmute herself and apologize to the court. But. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't, I just picked my phone up. I have an interview to be at. I'm not going to be able to make it, so. And apparently you, you, you blaming that on me. No, ma'am. Well, your attitude sucks. You're talking to me random. You, you're talking to me like I'm on the street. You're talking to me like I ran into you in the neighborhood. You're talking to me like I'm not Judge Lenise Bryant. 
So the fact that you scheduled an interview on the same day that you had court, that sounds like a poor choice and a, and a bad decision. That sounds like a poor choice and a bad decision. I do not schedule what my you're interview. not going to do is come into my courtroom and and uh, be disrespectful. That 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 apology was, I guess I, I shouldn't have even mentioned it because it was, certainly wasn't sincere. So let me just help you with something. You can continue to come to my courtroom with a bad attitude and it's only going to work out poorly for you. It's not going to work out poorly for me. It's only going to work out poorly for you. So when one has court, then you have to understand that uh, court could take. Mm, I'm not even going to continue because she is really on her way to contempt. She is really on her way to contempt. Um, so let's go ahead and let her come in person. Okay. Um, we're going to come in person. So the court is going to adjourn Ms. Wilson's pretrial conference. So next week, she's going to come in person. Um, I'm going to set the matter for 834. She's going to come in person on um, let's see today oh that's today so we're going to come in person on Monday July the 24th and we're going to come at 834 your honor 24 um, at 834 um, failure to appear is going to result in the um, bond being revoked, court issuing a capious, and the court is going to set the bond in the amount of $5,000 cash surety plus a GPS um, tether. Is there anything else for the record? My mother has an appointment on Monday. She just had knee surgery and I had to drive her at 830 in the morning. Okay, well, I mean, we all have to make choices. Is there anything else for the record? Because you wouldn't be dealing, we wouldn't be dealing with your mother's surgery if you was respectful today. So if you didn't come on my court today with your stanky attitude, if you didn't come on my court today with your disrespectful disposition, if you didn't come on my court today with your rude behavior, then we wouldn't be even, it wouldn't even be an issue about your mother's surgery. Wouldn't even be an issue about your mother's surgery. So you, you, you're rude and disrespectful, Miss Wilson. You're rude and disrespectful. And the fact that you're talking right now um, shows me how rude and disrespectful you are. You will have no contriteness about yourself. You have no humility about yourself. You're simply rude and disrespectful to the court, but there's never going to be a day that I allow you to come to my job and be rude and disrespectful to me without consequence. You're rude. You're disrespectful. I didn't charge you with the crime. I didn't set your court date for today. I showed up for work. And when I got up this morning, to show up for work, I didn't say, let me put on a robe so Miss Wilson can be rude and disrespectful. Miss Stevenson, I'm going to send Miss Wilson back to the breakout room. Because if she say one more thing to me in her tone, she going to jail. So I'm going to let her tell you about her mother. Because if she says one more thing to me in that tone, she's going to jail. Okay. There is an appropriate and respectful way to ask the court. If you turn your head from me one more time, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I promise you, I make a promise to you.
we're going to take a recess. No, Miss Maastricht, come on camera. I won't recess before I let you get discharged. Come on camera. Uh, Mr. Archer, we will, uh, your lawyer will get you a copy for your records, okay? Yes, Judge Brian, appreciate you. Thank you so much, ma'am. No problem. Have a great day. Stay safe, Ms. Susan. Of course, you know, it's great to see you. Okay. It's always good to see you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Archer. Yes, sir. Thank you. See, talk to you later. All right. All right. Take care. Ms. Stevenson, do you all need to speak to Mr. Holmes again in the breakout room? Yes, I do. Please, Your Honor. I know you do. And let me say this. If he get disconnected again, it's only one way that I'm going to see Mr. Holmes' case. Yes, Your Honor. Final pretrial conference at defense counsel's uh, Mr. Take care. Mr. Holmes, except to join the breakout. You know, it's great to see you. Okay. It's always good to see you. Thank you. Doing this, Mr. Holmes. That is correct. So the court did set this final pretrial conference and require the complaint witness to be present, Your Honor. At this time, I don't see the complaining witness, Mr. Victor Murray, in the waiting room, Judge. And I don't have an explanation as to why Mr. Murray is not present. I do understand there's an unidentified device in the courtroom right now and in the event that is not the complaining witness judge the people will not be able to proceed based on the complaining witnesses failure to appear for today's final pretrial conference as ordered by the court and the individual that i just let it Stuart Milton, did you hear please what? unmute and state your name and state your name All right. Um, I don't know who that is on the iPhone. They are unmuted, but they are not stating their name. And you're on the basis Daniel on the Holmes. record tape. Daniel Holmes. You gonna keep doing this, Mr. Holmes? No, no. Uh, I had myself on mute. Come in person, cause I'm not gonna keep doing this with you. I promise you that I am not, Mr. Holmes. I promise you that I am not. You need to come. No, my my stuff was on mute. My my bad. Yeah, my bad too. It's my bad too. I'm not going to keep doing this with you. Okay. Didn't I already say that the only way I was going to hear Mr. Holmes was in person? Y'all sending me some, but that's not for me. So, oh, I'm sorry, George. They keep unmuting me. I, no, I keep muting you because you are disrupting my court proceedings. With respect to Ms. Archer, today is a day set for final pretrial conference. The complaining witness was required to appear. They have failed to appear. The people have no explanation for the failure and they are unable to proceed without the complaining witnesses cooperation. The court is therefore going to grant defense counsel's motion and dismiss the matter without prejudice for failure of the complaining witness to appear. Mr. Toussaint, are you able to send over the order of dismissal um, to my clerk today? I, I am, Your Honor. All right. Miss um, Archer, we will mail you a copy of the. What happened to Miss Archer? I'm here, ma'am. Mr. Archer, where? Oh, there you go. You over there in the corner, Mr. Archer. I'm sorry. Just because you know the stuff moving around, Mr. I understand. Archer. Okay. Um, Mr. Archer, we will. Uh, your lawyer will get you a copy for your records. Okay. Yes, Judge Brian. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, ma'am. No problem. Have a great day. Stay safe, Ms. Susan. Of course, you know, it's great to see you. Okay. It's always good to see you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Archer. Yes, sir. Thank you. See, talk to you later. All right. All right. Take care. Ms. Stevenson, do you all need to speak to Mr. Holmes again in the breakout room? Yes, I do. Please, Your Honor. I know you do. And let me say this. If he get disconnected again, it's only one way that I'm going to see Mr. Holmes' case. Yes, Your Honor.
Mr. Holmes accept to join the breakout room and wait for Ms. Stevenson to come in to speak with you. Okay. I'm ready to do so. Please unmute and identify yourself to the court. When prompted to do so, please unmute and identify yourself for the court. Now, y'all just unmute it. Archer, please unmute and identify yourself for the court. Good morning, Judge Brown. I'm Good morning, Chair. Judge Brown. I'm Ms. Chair. You have an echo. I'm not have an echo. I'm not. And state your name for the court. Why y'all unmuting before I prompt you? Howes, please unmute and state your name for the court. Devian Howes. Devian Howes. This is why I don't allow y'all to. to. Miss Moody, why do you keep unmuting yourself before I ask you to? Please stop. Can the person on the iPhone that's being prompted please unmute and state your name for the court? This is ridiculous. Now you were unmuting when I didn't want you to. They be on house. I didn't. I'm not speaking to you, Mr. House. I'm. I'm prompting an individual. I'm prompting an individual. And it wasn't Miss Moody. And it wasn't. Hang you home. Hang you home. Okay, I'm. I'm. It's too much. And then you're gonna yell your name at me like three times to the person on the iPhone. Are you all? Are, is something going on that I that I need to be aware of? Don't do that again. No, the, my phone messed up. Okay, well, don't scream at us though. Don't scream at me. Now you that's you being ridiculous. It wasn't messed up when I didn't ask you to unmute, but then all of a sudden when I'm prompting you to unmute, your phone is messed up. Can you state your name, please? Daniel Holmes. Thank you. Now, Miss Moody, please state your name. Tamara Moody. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, please start your videos now. On behalf of the township. I'm a Klug student attorney on behalf of Mr. McDaniel and requesting permission to practice pursuant to Michigan Court Rule 8.120 under the supervision of Assistant Public Defender Chinaza Kiriak and Rowley. Permission is granted. Thank you. Mr. McDaniel, can you please state your name? Nelson McDaniel. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. McDaniel. Good morning. Mr. McDaniel is supposed to be on a payment plan of $50 per month. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I had a chance to speak with Mr. McDaniel, um, made him aware of the payment plan and the balance that he currently has. He did say that these past few months he has had to prioritize um, bills and uh, other finances for his family. So he is behind on that, but he is aware that um, these are payments that need to be made. When does he plan to start making payments? Mr. McDaniel, do you, do you have a, a date when that would be feasible for you? Yeah, as soon as the economy gets a little better. Is Mr. McDaniel working? No, I'm a uh, permanent disability. You need to provide proof of that, sir. Uh, what do you want to bring to the court or what, what, what can I, I spoke with you when I was in jail and let you know I was on a fixed income permanent disability and i asked could we give time served while i was in jail and obviously i don't know what you know what i'm saying so until they increase my check my bills ain't going to decrease my check is not increasing so i can't really ever see i'm in a hole 
just trying to survive out here. And I mean, really, what it, what it, what is my crime again? What what am I paying this money for? What 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 is what is this about? Driving while license suspended. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't hurt you. Is this really a crime that I have to? Mr. Nelson. Yeah. Allow the judge to gotta be one. Excuse me. There's always got to be one who's going to be disrespectful. How how was I disrespectful, ma'am? Mr. Nelson, allow the judge to speak. You asked her a question about, and she asked. She informed you that she would need proof of your disability. Not a problem. Where it should have stopped. Okay, so let's get that proof over to the judge, and she can review it, and then she'll let us know where we are from there. Okay. Uh, when would you like me to bring that proof to you? I'll give you a call, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm going to reschedule this matter for September the 6th, 2023, at 10 a.m. in person. I'll see you then, sir. Thank you. You're welcome.